So today, as I said, the topic is your 2022 vision, how to create and live it. So whilst I'm not a big fan of New Year's resolutions, why? Because most people don't even keep them halfway through the first month of the year. I believe it's important to have a vision of where you are headed, be that in your life, in your career, and to be intentional with your thoughts and your actions to help you to make your vision a reality. Otherwise, you run the risk of drifting through life with no clear direction, um, you're experiencing Groundhog Day, you're living life on a treadmill, it's the same thing every day, and then you get to the end of yet another year where nothing has changed, and maybe you're left feeling regret, resentment, even apathy, and you just keep going through the same thing year after year. So that's why for me, I believe it's important to have a vision of where you're headed. It just so happens that as it's the beginning of a new year, I figured it was a great opportunity to talk about this and maybe give you some ideas here to think about in terms of how you want to progress through the next, this year, what you want it to look like and take some steps to make that happen. So you'll see me looking down because I have prepared a few notes here that I want to refer to. But I'm going to walk you through some basic steps that will help you to create that vision and begin to live it. So first of all, I invite you to consider what areas of your life do you want to improve? What areas do you want to see change in? So to give you some examples, when I talk about areas of your life, it could be your health and well-being, maybe your fitness, your finances, your career, your business, perhaps it's your relationships, maybe your family life, possibly your social life, or the environment, the environment that you work or that you live in, maybe that wants to change. Um, maybe your hobbies, your interests, you want to change those. So perhaps it's a case of you want to improve at something that you already do, or you want to be able to spend more time doing that hobby, following through with it. Um, perhaps it's personal growth, personal development, and you want to start investing more time in that to, to work on your EQ, your self-awareness, perhaps living more consciously and, and living in flow. So it could be anything. There may be something I've not even covered there that is really important for you. So think about what areas in your life are important for you to want to see improvements, to want to see change. And then ask yourself, why? Why are those areas important? What is the reason that you want to see change? Because if you don't have the why at the start of this process, you're going to struggle all the way through to take action, to stay motivated and focused and to move forward. So think about your why. What is your why for doing this? So let's use a real life example. We'll stick with health and well-being because that's something that a lot of people strive to always be improving upon and yet many people struggle so think about okay what's your what is it you want to improve or to change when it comes to your health and well-being and it could be so for me it's about getting better sleep in terms of going to bed earlier i tend to be at a night out i step quite late and then i feel tired in the morning so i want to i'm currently working to shift that to be going to bed earlier so I can wake up earlier, I can also get a better quality of sleep and have more energy. So that's a priority for me this year. Um, so why is that? Because I know if I have more energy, I'll have better focus, whether it's in my business or in my broader life, um, and I'll have more energy to do the things that I used to be able to do. So that's a big why for me, because I know having good energy, having good sleep, which is perhaps one of the most important areas of your health is your sleep, it can impact everything else for me. So that's that's kind of my fundamental number one. So what is it for you and why? And what I would invite you to do is to identify, let's say three things, three areas that are your priority areas of focus. Now you can have more than that over the course of the year, but what I'm inviting you to do is to avoid getting into a state of overwhelm because when we get into a state of overwhelm, what often happens is that we then we do nothing. We procrastinate. We just don't know what to do first. We can't prioritize and we just give up and, and leave it. So I don't want you doing that. I want you to be taking action to move forward. So start with three areas that are your priority. So again, just to reiterate, it could be health and wellness, your fitness, your finances, career, relationships, your family or your social life. Maybe it's the environment that you live or you work in. Um, your hobbies, interests, your personal growth, or something else. So think about the top three where you want to see the biggest changes this year. 
And then what I'd like you to do is for those three areas is to score where you feel you are in those areas right now on a scale of 0 to 10. So for example, health and, and well-being. Um, for me right now, I'd say I'm probably at a maybe a five, five, possibly six um, out of 10. Where would I like to be by the end of this year? An absolute 10. Now, just as an aside, it, you don't have to score yourself as a 10 for everything that you want to get to, but you want to see improvements. So right now, understand where you are, how much would you score yourself? And then think about, okay, in 12 months time, where would I like to be? Would I like to be a 10 out of 10? Would I like to be an eight out of 10? So I can see that I progressed from where I'm at right now and I'm moving forward, but yet, you know, maybe you need to spend another six months or a year improving even further. That's okay. So think about that, score yourself on where you are now and where you would like to be. And then in order to really understand those scorings, there's some questions I want you to consider. So if I'm a five, let's say now, when it comes to my health and wellness, and I'd like to be a 10 by the end of the year, what will be different? So ask yourself, what would be different for you from where you are right now, at, let's say a five, to where you'll be at a 10? What will be different for you? And then ask yourself, what would that look like? What would look different for you? How would that sound for you? What would you be saying to yourself about that part of your life? And what would it feel like? So for example, using, <clears throat> excuse me, using my example again of energy, um, what would be different for me? I would have a more structured routine for my sleep. I would be getting to bed by 11 o'clock every night. Um, so that's what that would look like. Um, I would wake up with a lot more energy. I'd be having a better quality of sleep. Um, I'd be a lot more focused through the day. And I'd be able to probably do a lot more through the day and be more productive as well because I have more focus and energy. Um, what would that sound like? I probably would stop beating myself up. I would probably be able to jump out of bed in the morning and feel energized. So I'd be telling myself positive things rather than so when I hear the alarm go off, I'll be, oh, great, time to get up as opposed to, oh, no, I need to snooze it again six times. So think about what you'd be saying to yourself. And then how are you going to feel? So for me, the obvious thing is I'll have more energy. I'll feel um, lighter and just be able to, to get more done. So think about it for each of those areas that you've identified as your priorities. What would be different from for you in 12 months time to where you are now? What would you want that change to be? What is the improvement that you want to see? And then think about, right, so now you've understood that. What is it that needs to change in terms of your habits, your behaviors, your thoughts around this area of your life? So for me, with my sleeping pattern, my habits need to change. I need to start planning earlier in the evening to get to bed by 10, 30 or 11 o'clock rather than waiting until the last possible minute then doing all the things I need to do, which means by the time I do get into bed, it's midnight. So I need to instill new habits, which I'm already currently doing, which means that I can make my way to my bed a lot earlier than I currently have been. The other thing is your behaviors. What behaviors can you change or do? what can you do differently to enable you to instill the new, the new habits, um, the new intentions, so that you get to see that shift and what about your thoughts? So for me at the moment, my thoughts are when the alarm goes off as, oh God, I'm so tired. I wish I'd gone to bed earlier, pretty much every morning. So for me, my thoughts want to shift to the thoughts of, I've had a great sleep. I'm so glad I went to bed at 10.30 or 11 and I feel great for the day ahead. Okay, so think about what needs to change for you. What are the thoughts that you want to shift, the behaviours? If it's maybe with health and well-being, it might be your food and maybe to um, create and instill better habits in terms of what you're putting into your body. So your behaviors may need to change. Maybe you want to start focusing on things that feed your body well rather than things that are more likely to make you ill. So just start to really dig deep into each of these areas and think about what is it I can do differently. So once you've got that list of the different habits, the behaviors, the actions, the thoughts, now what you want to do is create a plan. So you want to have milestones. So you break this down from, let's say going going from, in my case, um, the start of January and I'm, you know, I go to bed too late, I wake up and I'm tired and I want better energy to now, 
what is it I can do over the next 12 months and what can I break down to make it realistic for me so that by the time I hit Q4 of this year, I'm already there. I'm doing what I wanted to do. Does that make sense? Let me know. Let me know in the comments if this resonates with you, if this is helpful for you. If you've just joined, let me know where you're watching from and welcome. So the next thing to do is to break this down into manageable milestones. Because if we just set a goal, so for example, if someone decides, right, I want to lose two stone by the end of the year, but you've got that and that's it. You do nothing else. You just keep telling yourself, I need to lose two stone, but you haven't got those um, manageable milestones along the way to get you there. The likelihood is that you're going to struggle because you need to have a detailed plan to get you there, a measurable plan. So start by setting milestones and break them into quarters. So 90 day milestones. So January to March, what does that look like? April to June, what does that look like? And so forth. So for, and the other thing I want to emphasize here is you don't want to create massive significant change on day one of instilling new habits because if they're huge shifts for you, the likelihood is you're going to give up after a period of time. So you want to start with small habits, instilling those uh, step by step, day by day, so that they don't feel like huge change, huge shifts, but you then recognize and, and experience the compound effect. Um, in fact, there's a great book called The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, worth a read, definitely recommend it, where it talks about the, the small steps. So it's almost like having that 1% shift each day or each month in something that you do over time will create that massive compound shift. So a book to, to check out. Um, so start with your 90 day plan. What do you want to achieve in Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4? And then once you've established that for each of your quarters, you want to then look at your monthly plan, your monthly goal. What is it you want to achieve month by month? So for example, for me, Q1, I want to be able to be getting into bed by 11.30 at the latest. Why? Because my ultimate goal is to be going to bed at 10.30. However, for me shifting from 12, one o'clock in the morning to 10.30 is a huge jump and unlikely that I can sustain it over time. Whereas if I do it a little bit like piecemeal, bit by bit, it'll be a lot easier for me to take on board. So for me, I'm starting with 11.30. So if I can get into bed by 11.30 for Q1. As I work through Q1 and then I break that down into my monthly milestones, I'll probably look at actually tweaking that. So by February, I'd like to be getting into bed by 11.15 and then see how I get on with that and maybe tweak it again to get to 11 o'clock by the end of Q1, which will already be a huge shift for me to, to be able to do that. So you want to make it realistic and manageable for you so that you will stick to it and you will um, commit to, to following through. And, and here's the thing, we will all have bad days when we don't follow through on our intentions, on our goals that we've set ourselves. So my big invitation to you right now is do not beat yourself up over it. Keep going with it. Every day is day one. So there will be days when, in my case, I might stay up till one o'clock doing some work or watching TV or whatever it is. And then I wake up and I'm like, oh, why have I done this? Because I've messed up my my pattern of behavior that I've been working towards and doing really well with over the last few weeks. Um, and I feel like I'm on the back foot, but it's OK. You know what? Tomorrow's day one again. I'll go back to it and I'll keep going. Don't beat yourself up because we all are allowed down days. If it's your food, if it's when we talk about health and well-being or maybe it's you want to eat more healthily. And yes, you might have a day when you binge out on, on food that you know probably doesn't serve you and you feel rough the next morning or you have too much alcohol or, or whatever it is you do. And it's OK. Because you'll you'll feel the impact of it, but then just don't beat yourself up. Say, OK, well, I was allowed that day. I chose to do that. And you, you knew the consequences of what you do, your actions. So tomorrow's day one. Let's start again and refocus back on that. So that's a huge invitation to you to please take that on board. Do not beat yourself up if you're not getting or, or moving forward as quickly as you would like in the process. And that's why it's good to have these milestones. So you've got something to measure against and to track your progress to see how you're getting on. 
And another example with health and well-being may be, okay, I want to lose two stones. So what can I do? What what actions, milestones can I put in place to start achieving that? So maybe for um, Q1, you want to be able to, by the end of the quarter, be walking 40 minutes a day. So how can you break that down into baby steps that are manageable and build up that compound effect? So maybe for month one, you start with 20 minutes and month two, you add on an extra 10 minutes. So now you're walking for 30 minutes and then we get to month three and now you add on an extra 10 minutes. You're, you're walking for 40 minutes. So already in, in the first quarter, you've gotten to your 40 minute goal. And then decide what you want the rest of the quarters to look like, what the improvements are. So it could be you maintain the 40 minutes throughout the year. But in addition to that, now you add something else in. Maybe you start to do some weight training or some yoga or you go to the gym, whatever it is. But again, introduce things slowly and have small changes because that's when you'll see the compound effect. And that's when you're more likely to actually commit and stick with the process. And then finally, and invite you to live it. So what do I mean by that? Well, by instilling these habits and then actually really, rather than telling yourself, oh, I'll be happy when I have, in my case, when I am going to bed at 10.30 every night and waking up at, at 5.30 or six, or saying, well, until I'm, I'm not gonna be happy until I've lost two stone, it is not the way to do it because you'll always be beating yourself up and it doesn't feel good. You want this to feel good. So begin to live it. So what do I mean by that is we have our intentions and that's great. So have an intention to, to go to bed earlier, um, but focus on your implementation. Intentions are one thing. Action is another. Implementation equals taking action. So focus on the actions that you're taking every day, those small habits. And that's what I'm saying. If you've got three areas as a maximum that you start with to focus on, in your in your life then it's it's more manageable but also create small steps in each of those three areas for you to do throughout the next weeks months and quarters so it doesn't feel like huge shifts that you're taking on massive change and then you just it all just becomes too much and you just give up and stop doing anything you don't want that so when i talk about living it live as though you are ready at that 10 out of 10 so for me, when I talk about the energy levels is waking up and telling myself, so remember my thoughts, my inner dialogue, my habits is to start telling myself that I'm already there, that I'm feeling more energized, that I'm much more focused through the day. So you're almost starting to um, subconsciously reinforce what it is you're looking to achieve by living it. Another example is if you're looking to lose weight and you want to change your eating habits is when I say live it, make conscious decisions about what you're putting in your body. So whilst you might be following a, some kind of eating plan, yes, there is that to, to focus on, but also just start to be more conscious or mindful of, about what you're putting in your body and ask yourself, will this serve me in terms of helping me to get to where I want to be? And if I, if I go ahead and eat this, so the cream cake or the chocolate bar, how will that impact me? How will I feel by eating it? both physically and mentally. And am I okay with that? Because what you don't want to do is get to the end of the year and be resentful, beating yourself up, um, going into a mode of apathy because like you didn't get anywhere near your goal and then you just give up altogether and continue on that treadmill of, of Groundhog Day. So start to live it by being really intentional, becoming a lot more aware of that vision that you have created where it is you want to be in those areas of your life in 12 months time and every day write them down maybe stick them on a post-it note and have it in your bathroom so every morning you you see those three goals those intentions that you set for yourself in those three areas of your life so have them around you put it on a post-it note in your office maybe um, or on your laptop on your screensaver so that you see it regularly have it in the kitchen um, so it, you're reinforcing your vision of where you want to be in a year's time and it will remind you and reinforce that the decisions that you're making those choices the habits the actions that you're taking you want those to be aligned with those um those goals those that the vision for the end of the year so that's what i mean by living it it's, it's starting to become more intentional with your habits the the behaviors that you have the choices that you are making and the other thing is 
reflect. So reflect on a regular basis. Now that can be weekly, uh, fortnightly or monthly. Take a little bit of time out to reflect on your milestones for those weeks and months and how you've done. Um, so measure against what you set yourself to do. So for example, if you said I was going to walk 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then 40 minutes um, in the first three months, okay, look back and say, how many days did I do that successfully? Where did I fall down? What was the reason I didn't do it? You know, did I get myself up again the next day and go for it and continue? Or did I then give up for three days or four days before I got myself back on the, that routine? Um, reflect, but it's not about beating yourself up. It's about learning from where you were and what you've been doing so you can keep tweaking. Maybe you're trying to, you realize you're trying to stretch yourself too far, too quickly, and that's why you're not being consistent. So if you start with a small little habits, a small intention, and instill those gradually, you're more likely to, to follow through. Um, and you will have bad days. You will have days when you don't do what you committed to. And that is okay. Please do not beat yourself up over it. But just remind yourself that every day is day one. So if you decide to go out and, and, and binge on your favorite uh, puddings or, to, you know, um, whatever meal that isn't maybe as healthy for you as it could be, or you got to have a few drinks, it's okay. Just remember, you choose that decision. There's no point beating yourself up over it. Just simply say, right, tomorrow's day one. I'm going to start again and keep going. So that is my invitation to you to set your vision for 2022 and to create it and live it. Think about the top three areas in your life that are most important for you, the areas where you want the biggest change. Identify those and then look at Okay, what does that change look like in terms of where you are right now on a scale of 0 to 10 and where you'd like to be in 12 months time? And think about how what, what needs to change, what will be different, what will that look like, sound like, be like, and what are the steps that you need to take to get you there? Break them down and create your mini milestones. So have your quarterly milestones and then break them down into monthly and to weekly. And the biggest thing here is to remember to make them realistic for your lifestyle, for your existing commitments and your day to day living. So they don't feel like there's a huge new thing or three things that you've now got to implement into your day. And then, as I said, you don't do it. So keep them small. Baby steps is what it takes. Another book that I recommend, I mentioned The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, uh, another book that's great to help with instilling new habits. And in fact, actually shifting your identity to who you want to be, who you want to become by achieving that vision is Atomic Habits by James Clear. So another book that you might want to, to check out that can help with instilling those habits and becoming more aware of who you're being, the person that you want to be to live the life that you want and to, to live that vision that you've created for yourself. So thank you for joining me today. If you've been on live, then do let me know if you've got any comments, any questions. I will come back to you and just tag me in. And if you're watching on replay, also pop in your comments, your questions. I welcome them. I welcome the feedback. Let me know if this has been useful for you. And I'd love to hear your, um, your vision for 2022, what your three areas of focus are going to be. And by all means, do check in. Let me know how you're getting on. And if I can support you in any way, then do reach out, whether it's here on this live or direct message me. I'd be happy to hop on a call with you and have a conversation. Toby Maguire. Oh, my goodness me. Wish I saw all of this here. Amazing advice. Simple, but so spot on. Have to go. Let's have a coaching call. Thank you so much. Toby, it's really overdue a catch up, I think, isn't it? Um, it's been a good couple of years, if not more. Um, so let's arrange a catch up. Thank you for hopping on today. And for everyone who's been who's joined me, who's watched me again, I wish you all the best for 2022. And I look forward to hearing and, and supporting you on achieving that vision um, that you want for yourself. And remember, it's all about showing up as the best version of you. That's the ultimate place that you want to be, because when you do that, everything changes. Everything becomes so much more easier and effortless. And you, you get to live from a place of joy and of flow and not feeling the stress and the anxiety that most of us tend to live through day in and day out. 
So as I said, I wish you well for the year ahead. Let me know if you have any questions, if I can support you in any way. And as always, until next time, remember to build your influence, to make an impact and be remembered for the right reasons by showing up as the best version of you. And if you haven't already done so, do click on the links that Shah has kindly shared in the comments and register for your playbook if you haven't done so and register um, to subscribe rather to my YouTube channel where you can get all the previous episodes of My Brand Live as well as the video podcast episodes from My Brand HQ. So until next time, take care of yourselves. Have a great week ahead and weekend and I shall see you next week. Take care.